Hey everybody, my name's David. My name's Jake. I'm Ryan. And welcome to Board Together Games. Today, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Normally at Board Together Games, we like to focus on bringing you board game content that is focused on people who are new to the board gaming hobby and families. But today, we're doing a top five list. Actually, these guys, these two jokers are doing a top five list. And I'm just along for the ride. So we're going to be looking at their top five anticipated games for Gen Con 2017. Right, guys? Yeah. What is the caveat to this list? We are not going to Gen Con. That is right. We are not going to Gen Con. I know what you're thinking. Why are you putting together a game a list of games that you're anticipating for Gen Well, that's because we're not putting games on this list that are for demo at Gen Con. We are only putting games on our list. For your sale. List, that are going to be for sale either, well, they will be for sale either at the show or at online retailers. Usually they show up at around the same time, right? Mm -hmm. So these lists were put together using the Gen Con 2017 preview that is available at BoardGameGeek.com. It was put together by Eric Martin and the awesome team over there at Board Game Geek. So thank you to those guys very much. Another way you could describe this list, what do people say when they're not going to Gen Con? Gen Can't. Yeah, Gen Can't. We've already gone to a couple this year. It's kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. It's super duper crowded at this one. It's the biggest one in the United States. And me personally, I don't really like feeling cramped with a whole bunch of people around, okay. right? You too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we decided we were going to skip this one and just uh, buy some of these games as soon as they came out, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, we're going to show you some of our honorable mentions and expansions that didn't quite make our list. That's right. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, so first we're going to talk about a couple of expansions. Jacob, what is the first expansion you want to talk about? My first expansion is uh, another smash-up expansion called Big in Japan. Mm -hmm. And this one has an equivalent of Power Rangers, Fighting Girls, Godzilla, and considerably Pokemon, too. And I like some of those genres, so I, I really feel like that's going to... Uh, you know, make the game that of Smash Up more interesting to me. Yeah, we play it a lot. Yeah. Um, and it's always great to go back to Smash Up and be able to come up with new combinations of decks to put together, factions to put together, and battle. Right. Yeah. And that's what it is. You're basically taking, every player takes two factions out of this game, 20 cards each, shuffles them together, and then you draw five cards, that's your hand, and you take turns, play a, a minion and an action, and then maybe some more things depending on what the cards say. And you play these on bases and you try to gain a certain amount of power. When the when the bases hit a certain threshold, they explode. And whoever had the most power there gets points. Second place gets points. Just like that. And we love it. So anytime yeah. you can add more smash up, we're in, right? Yeah. That cool. was also on my list. Is it on your list as well? Yeah. Awesome. And what do you think your favorite expand or favorite faction is going to be out of this new one? Um, that would probably be the kaiju monster monsters. monsters. Yeah, mm. yeah. We've been watching a lot of those old Godzilla movies around the house here too, so yeah. we're kind of in that uh, mindset. Seems like here lately. Yeah. Uh, some of those movies are really bad, so bad <laughs> that they're, they're interesting. good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So there you go. Both of them had Smash Up Big in Japan. Ryan, you got any other expansions? Yes, and one of them is called Cities of Splendor. Mm. It's an expansion for Splendor, which hopefully you won't beat me at it with the expansion. <laughs> I plan to, but yeah. it probably won't. <laughs> this adds a couple new modules, and I heard that you can't use them all at once. I seem to have heard that as well, but and, and I didn't know that up mm -hmm. until recently here. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting, and Splendor's one of those games It's a really... Uh, kind of light family style, which is what we're about here. Uh, engine building game. Mm -hmm. And we've done a full review on this game, so we'll leave a link to it up here in the upper right-hand corner. Click the little I. You can head over and watch the full review of Splendor up there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, like you said, just more modules, more stuff for Splendor. Mm -hmm. Even Jake likes this one. Yeah, even though I lose a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that might be because you tend to Skip. play the strategy of trying to hoard as many gems as you can. <laughs> And yet you can only have 10 at a time. Yeah. He goes for the seven point card at the beginning of the game. And it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that one again? 
Cities of Splendor. Cool. All right, you guys got anything else for expansions? I do, and it's called Sheriff of Nottingham Merry Men. This is an expansion for Sheriff of Nottingham. Yep. Which I know we all love. Yeah, it's a bluffing game, basically, where uh, players take turns being the sheriff, and then the other players are trying to uh, bring different goods and items into the marketplace for sale. It's kind of a set collection thing to get points, and you can also sneak in contraband, and that's how you get more points. Mm -hmm. So you have to bluff your way into that. So what what else is what does this do for Sheriff of Nottingham? This hat adds a six player, so you can play up to six people instead of five. Mm. And there's also the Merry Men, which if you sneak them in, they get you big points. So you're sneaking a dude into the marketplace <laughs> in, in a bag? <laughs> I don't know either. All right. Well, I guess we'll find out <laughs> in Sheriff of Nottingham. Merry Men. Okay. So that was all for expansions. You guys ready to move on to honorable mentions? Yep. Yes. These are games that didn't quite make your list. Let, Jacob, let's start with you. What do you got for an honorable mention? Uh, my first honorable mention is called OK Play, which is a two to four player game and is ages eight and up. And basically, it's sort of a tic-tac-toe bingo style game where you're laying tiles down and you're trying to make a row of five, either um, vertical, horizontal, vertical, kind of thing? horizontal, diagonal. Okay. Yeah. And uh, basically, you have to do that before your opponents can, and you win that round if you want to play more rounds or game if you're just playing once. i got to admit, I don't know anything about this one, but sounds like a pretty cool little filler-style game, yeah? Yeah. Jake's, you're kind of, just to kind of give you a background, Jake is, he likes, the smaller the game, the better. Yeah. Seems like. Super tiny games, he's in, right? Yeah. Uh, so the smaller games, the filler games... Two-player head-to-head type games, especially if they're in a small package and it's a lot of game in a little box kind of thing, that's definitely right up your alley, right? Yep. It sounds like this is going to fit right in. Yeah, all it is is a carabiner, so carrying uh, some tiles. A carabiner? Yeah. It's got a little stem that goes through a hole in the tiles and it just carries it with a little bottom part and a carabiner at the top and you can just put it on a backpack and what? ready to go. Woot, woot. <laughs> I'll have to check this out. I've never heard of it. Now, what is it called? Okay, play. Okay! My first honorable mention is a game called Dig. Dig is a part of the Paco game series, which are really small games that you can fit in your pocket. Mm. This is one This one is a dog-themed pick-up-and-deliver game. You're picking up bones from the yard, or digging up bones, and then putting them into the same color dog bowl. There are five colors, and they score points for how close they are to the dog house. So, oh, that sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so it's competitive. Yes. And how many players? Two to four. Very cool. That is Dig in the Paco Game series from Perplexed, if I'm not mistaken, right? Correct. My next one is called Wordsy. It's a one to six player game, and it's 20 minutes, and it's ages 10 and up. And this is sort of a Scrabble-ish style game where you want to think of a word that uses up the most of the letter cards because there's going to be eight cards and you're trying to think of a letter that make, that uses uh, the most of those eight cards and you get a certain amount of points depending on how many cards that you use up with your word. And basically after a couple of rounds, whoever has the most points wins. So do you, does the tableau of letter cards in the middle change from round to round? Yes, because whenever you use those words, when those it, letters. you score and then you put them into a discard pile and get eight new words. Oh, okay. So you don't have a hand of cards. You're just looking at what's out there and yep. coming up with the best. Well, that sounds pretty cool. What's yeah. it called again? Wordsy, which is not really a word. My other honorable mention is a game called Super Mario Level Up. Super Mario Level Up is a bluffing strategy game with a cool-looking stair aspect to it. On oh, yeah, it's got the 3D-looking uh, yeah. board, play, whatever. Yeah. On your turn, you move a character up, and that may, may or may not be the one that you want to win. Hmm. Oh, okay, so it's almost kind of like a candy chaser, candy chaser type yeah. of thing? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Oh. Do, so, I see. So you get a secret character... You get five secret characters. What? Ooh. Catchy. And then you, when someone gets to the top level, you vote yes or no. 
if you vote no, I think it's kind of like resistance. If someone votes no, the whole thing, the character gets removed from the from the game and you keep going. Well, that oh. actually sounds pretty good. I had seen this game before and kind of wrote it off because it was Super Mario theme. And typically any video game to board game translations yeah. typically don't work out that good. But that actually sounds kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I guess we will find out, won't we? Mm-hmm. In what's it called? Super Mario Level Up. Okay, everybody, it is time for number five. Go. My number five is Jungle with two Gs, so someone can't spell. It is a two to <laughs> player game. It is 10 to 15 minutes, and it's for ages eight and up. And what Jungle is, is simply a series of mini games with the same deck of cards. It's pretty fancy. It has five <laughs> <laughs> it's got five different mini games. And it's 10 to 15 minutes for each mini game. if you're confused about that. So it's more of a filler, and that's what I'm all about. But, yeah, it's yeah. a filler that can go along with bigger games later. So multiple games just out of the one deck of cards. Yes. That's interesting. How many players? Uh, two to ten. Wow. So you can... Jungle lot. with a double G that no one will ever be able to find on Google. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ryan, what's your number five? My number five is a game called Flip Ships. We actually have demoed this game at Origins Game Fair. Yeah, we did. Yes, and <laughs> Flip Ships is a cooperative flicking game where you're trying to deplete the enemy ships and get your and flick a number of your and your friends' ships into the mothership. In any number of times, or a number yeah, they're of times. they're little cardboard discs. Yeah, those are your ships, and you flick them in the air, or well, you kind of well, I guess you could flick them any way you want to, right? Or is there rules on that? You have you actually have the little stand that you flick it off of. Yeah, they give you that stand, or I think you can flick them from the side of the table. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think you have to do both. I think you have to get rid of all of the enemy ships mm -hmm. that are cards. It's a deck of cards, and you have to hit the mothership a certain number of times, right? Mm -hmm. In order to win? I think you have to go in the mothership. Oh, that might be. That might be. But yeah, that's pretty neat. The artwork on it is really cool, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, who's the publisher? Um, Renegade Game Studios. Cool. And that one's called? Flip Ships. Time for number four. All right. Go. My number four is called Dice Bot Mega Fun. And this is a two to four player game. It's for 30 minutes and ages 14 and up. In this game, you get to design your own robot, and you get to fight other players using cards, actually weapon cards that you can, there are different weapon cards that you use to fight your other uh, players, hopefully friendly, and whoever wins three victory medals, which after a, after you win a battle, you get a victory medal, uh, whoever has three wins. Wow. I did not know about this one either. You're surprising me with the games that you've got. I, I haven't heard much about any of these, so... And what's this one called again? Dice Bot Mega Fun. Because who wants to just have fun? You have to have Mega, mega Fun! fun. <laughs> okay, Ryan, what's your number four? My number four is a game called Magic Maze. Oh, yes. I'm familiar with this one. Yeah. And everyone is a cardinal direction or a roll, like going up a or a power, like going up and down escalators. <laughs> yeah, this is a, uh, a real-time cooperative, right? Yeah, but you can't talk. <laughs> right. You cannot cool. talk to each other. Uh, you don't play the characters. You play the uh, di either a direction. Yeah, you get you get assigned something to do as opposed to a player piece, just like Ryan was saying. And you have a certain amount of time to collect some items uh, and escape the... Mall. The mall. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to the mall, <laughs> and we need to get out. <laughs> Why are we at the mall in the first place? If we're just gonna because imagine... we're stealing things. Oh, oh that's, that's, that's seriously what the game is about. Oh. It sounds illegal. <laughs> <laughs> so, like Ryan said, you cannot talk in this game, and so if you are missing. The job that you're supposed to do, the other players cannot tell you. They basically have to stare at you intently or kick you or something to that effect to get you to do what you're supposed to do. 
It looks very cool. This was this may or may not be on my list as well. You'll have to check the other top five anticipated games of 2017 Gen Con that we published, where Kathy and me, myself, I, Kathy and I, have our top five lists. So check that out as well. But that is your number four, which is... Magic Maze. My number three is Battle Kittens, which is... (laughs) (laughs) You gotta laugh at me. This is serious, guys, okay? (laughs) It's not the word, it's the way you said it. My number three is Battle Kittens. <laughs> Stop. My number three is Battle Kittens, which is a two to six player game and is ages eight and up. In this game, you get to draft kitten cards, and whoever has the most fit awarded fish tokens, which you get after winning a battle, wins. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go draft some kittens. This is my dream game. Okay? <laughs> and that's my number three, Battle Kittens. Ryan, number three. My number three is a game called Flick 'em Up Dead a Winner. In this game, you are survivors of a zombie apocalypse, and you're tr- using weapons to win the game. This the, the game winning varies because there's multiple scenarios. And it's also a dexterity game, right? Correct. Yeah. So you're uh, moving characters around the board or around the play surface. Yeah. And then you're using weapons or things and you're mm-hmm. flicking those at Zambies. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. This is kind of a, a spinoff of two games. There's the original Dead of Winter and the original Flick 'em Up. Mm-hmm. And they mash these two things together. Dead of Winter is a post-apocalyptic zombie, very serious type of game. Flick 'em up is a very fun cowboy themed uh, flicking game. Flicking game, dexterity game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this looks pretty great. This mm-hmm. looks pretty great. So when you buy it, I'll happily play it. <laughs> yeah, I really like dexterity games, so I'm not surprised this is on my list. And that's my number three. Flick 'em up, that a winner. My number two is Orc, which is also in the Perplexed Paco game series, and it's a two player game. It's five to ten minutes, and it's ages eight and up. And in this game, you're battling your opponent with two-sided orc cards. Uh, One side of the card, well actually one half of the card is one colored orc, and the other half is another colored orc. And what you're trying to do is get the most, sort of like a set collection, and whoever has the highest set collection wins that battlefield and gets a certain amount of points, depending on what the battlefield cards is. And after a certain amount of battles, um, whoever has the most points wins. So yeah, again, the the pack of games series, they're all games that are in super tiny boxes that look like basically a pack of chewing gum, Yeah. right? It's, they're that small. Uh, usually they're just cards. Sometimes they contain a couple of tokens. And this is the, uh, one of the games in the second series of those games, the pack of games series. There was a series one, series two. Uh, each set has eight games in it. Yeah. And this is one of the second series, and that is? Orc. My number two is a game called Zooball, which is another flicking game. Yeah, another one. (laughs) Dexterity games are big this year, and so are cooperative games. There's a lot of both of them that are being released, it seems like, at Gen Con. So Mm -hmm. what's Zooball about? Zooball is a competitive flicking game where you have three defenders and one scorer. On your turn, you can either flick your three defenders, Mm -hmm. all three of them, or your scorer. This is two or four players. So in a two-player game, you're doing, you know, like in soccer, it has one side in the middle and the other side in the middle. But in a four-player game, you're going corner to corner. Oh, so the different teams got to shoot across each other? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. In a two-player game, you're going to get three points. And in a four-player game, it's first one to get a goal. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah. So it's... Is it a super, like, one-minute game? How long is it? It says 15 to 30 minutes. But in a four-player game, there's other people going... You're only going cross, and you can't score on the other side. Only corner to corner you can score. Okay, okay. But you can flick over to knock other people out. That's my number two, Zubal. Okay, we have reached 
the number one spots of the most anticipated games of Jake and Ryan for Gen Con 2017. Here we go. Take it away, Jake. My number one is called Take the Gold, which is a two to six player game. It's five to 15 minutes and it's ages eight and up. And what you're doing is drawing and playing cards to sort of mess with your other players and to try. And what you're doing is, you know, distracting them and giving them things that, you know, gives them less cards or something like that. And what your what your goal is to secretly get four coin cards. There's going to be on the front of the card. It's just going to have a gold coin and you want to collect four of those before your other opponents can secretly so they don't know what you have. And at the end of the game... You play your four cards to prove that you have them, and that's how you win the game of Take the Gold. Very interesting. Plays up to six? Yeah. Another quick game. I don't. I think the longest game on your list is 15 minutes. <laughs> yep. And again, that is called... Take the Gold. Which is your number? Wayne. Wayne. <laughs> okay, and Ryan, number one. Flam Rouge is my number one. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah. This is a really cool bike racing game. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of different because instead of rolling dice to move, your movement is driven by cards in your hand. Yeah, and each player is controlling two riders, right? That I have different that have different uh, um, Abil abilities or, yes. or movement yeah, yeah, yeah. styles. Because you have two decks, I think. Yeah. You have a deck of cards for the one type of rider and a deck of cards for the other type of rider. I think you have a hand of one in, one deck in this one and one deck in this one. We're good at this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> if we didn't say that up front, we're going to make mistakes. So don't hold that against us, please. But anyway, yeah, it's bike racing, which normally I would think, boo, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't really interest me. But I've seen this as well, and it looks... Very interesting. It looks like a lot of fun. It's much better than your typical roll and move mm -hmm. type of racing, right? Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's getting a lot of good buzz too. This is getting a lot of uh, attention from a lot of people mm -hmm. in the industry. So we have high hopes for it. Yes. And that is... Flamme Rouge. From Stronghold Games. And that wraps it up for our top five list of anticipated games for Gen Con 2017. That's right. And if you like what you saw here, please take a minute to like this video and comment and subscribe to our channel. We would really appreciate that. We're making a big push right now to grow this channel. And if you want to see more of these two jokers doing game reviews and stuff like that, please support us. Leave some comments. Let us know how we're doing. That's how we know if we need to change things up do things differently, yeah. and just generally if we're doing a good job. We're going to leave links in the description below for uh, a lot of the games that we talked about here today. They are probably going to be pre-order links for the most part because a lot of these games aren't coming out until Gen Con or a few days before, possibly. Yeah. And that's one way that you can support us. If you, if you like some of the games that we're talking about here, use those links. Click over to Amazon and pick one up for yourself if it's something that you really like. We'll also leave a link in the description for Gamer Threads. That is a company that we have been doing uh, some partnership with. They do really great board game related t-shirts like... This one. Yes, the Seriously I'm a Villager t-shirt and the Star Realms Respect My Authority shirt. So another way that you can support us here at Board Together Games is to click on over to Gamer Threads, pick up one of those shirts for yourself. And there's a few other ones that you can choose from as well. We're also going to leave links down below for all of the places that you can reach out and contact us on Twitter, Facebook, website. Yeah. And thank you all so much for tuning in today. We really appreciate it. We had a good time. Hopefully you did too. And remember, if you're bored together. <laughs> 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 Welcome back. Oh. Pick a winner. <laughs> <laughs> when someone takes a bum? A bone. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs>